In our previous video, we described what XSD is at a high level. And we also talked about our problem statement, which is we are a website and we want to receive data in XML format from somebody else, but we want to make sure that it meets our requirements. Our requirements are spelled out in this document called Plant Places XML Definition, and this describes how we can receive plants as in the scientific definition of a plant, and also receive specimens from that plant uh, as in a, a plant we can physically touch. Looks like I misspelled this one, so we'll fix it here. So this document describes in a human readable term how that XML should look. But we can describe this in computer terms as well by using something called XSD. The advantage of XSD is that it allows us to codify these rules that we have here in a way that a computer can understand so that a computer can perform a validation to make sure that the XML that it is receiving does abide by the rules that are stated here in this document. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this document and we're going to begin to create an XSD file that describes these rules. While we're writing the XSD file, we're going to write a sample XML file as well, and we'll use that to validate our XSD file. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to use, uh, in this video, Notepad++, we're eventually going to take a look at a Visual Studio service, but uh, right now we're going to use Notepad++ to start our XSD. So first note that the XML that we want to receive has a root element called plant. Uh, so that's going to be our very first element that we put in the XSD. So let's get started. I'm simply starting with a brand new uh, file in Notepad++. This is just uh, straight up Notepad++ with the XML tools plugin installed, which is quite handy. So anyway, let's start our XSD. XSD is going to start with a fairly standard top and bottom line. So I, you notice just for the sake of speed in this video, I'm copy pasting this from an XSD document that I already have on my computer. This is fairly common though. We have our XML description line at the top. Then we have a root element called XML schema uh, with a namespace. Namespace we'll get into later, but a namespace is essentially a way that we can ensure that we don't have duplicated element names uh, inside of one XML document. So nonetheless, we start with that. Now after this, we're going to say XS colon element and we are going to define, using the name attribute, the root element of our document. So root element, we're calling plant, okay? And what is a root element? A root element is the one element that begins and ends an XML document. A validated or a well-formed XML document should have only one root element. Uh, I'll show you the root element in just a moment when we reach over into our XML document. But that's important because it's essentially the very top node in a hierarchy. If you think of something like a tree or a root system, um, it's kind of like the, the very first ancestor, the very first Adam and Eve. So we'll say uh, excess element name equals plant. Okay. And then we need to close this. Remember in XML, we'll have an open tag that doesn't have any slash. Uh, just like this guy, and that will typically have a close element that looks very similar. So excess element, just like so. Now the guts of our XSD will go here. So we'll put a little comment here, XSD validation rules go inside the uh, this XS element tag. Okay, and notice the syntax that I'm using here, less than symbol exclamation dash dash, and then dash dash greater than symbol, that represents a comment. So I'm going to save this. We'll go ahead and save as. I'm going to save it just in a folder called demo, and we will call this guy plants.xsd. One little trick here, you notice the save as type is .txt. Uh, I can change that, but I can also just put the file name in quotes. If I put the file name in quotes, it will ignore whatever the save as type is below. So we go ahead and save. We see as soon as I save it with the XSD extension, it colors up properly, which is great. Okay, so XSD is going to be in one file. These are the validation rules of our XML. The XML content will be in a different file. Now we are going to relate these together using a special kind of tag. So uh, just a moment, just like our XSD, 
A little bit of boilerplate stuff, some things that are going to be in just about any XML document and does require a bit of typing. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from a different XML document that I have. So first of all, we have our XML heading. Secondly, we don't need this line. That's just something from the file where I borrowed it. That line is uh, an XSD XML transformation, XSLT. We will get into that in a later video, but it's not relevant to our current video. Okay, so we have a very simple root element here. Uh, we're going to call this one plant. I believe that matches with our XSD. Yep, it's called plant. Okay, so this root element, remember what a root element is. It is what begins and ends our XML payload. So we start with the root element called plant. I need to make some more changes to it, but before making changes, let's go ahead and close off that root element because if we don't do it now, we risk forgetting to do it. So I have uh, open plant, and then I have a couple of things that are indicated here, our XMLNS XSI and our XSI no namespace schema location. I'll describe what these are in a later video, uh, but in this video, I just wanna show how to link up uh, XSD and XML in a quick and easy way and using this attribute of the root element, using this attribute, no namespace schema location, uh, that's a very quick way to hook up XSD with XML, especially if you're running with the XSD and the XML on your local computer. So the root element name is XSI, no namespace schema location. The value is the location of the XSD document. I'll put these both in the same directory for simplicity, so we don't need to worry about a relative path. We only need to worry about the file name. Now, let me take one step back here. We are currently in an XML document. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and save this, and we will call this plants.xml. Remember our trick uh, to put it in quotes uh, so that, it, so that it, uh, it, it uses just the file name we've typed here. So plants.xml, um, okay. And what's interesting is it, it, it immediately tells me I have a violation because it says I can't find this XSD document that's specified here. And it's absolutely correct because I haven't told it which XSD to look for. I've only placed the file extension. So let's go ahead and say plants.xsd and save again. Notice when I save this time, I do not get an error because what's happening now is we are in an XML document and we are saying that this XML document should be validated with this XSD file here. It's able to locate plants.xsd because I've given it the proper name here, which matches the file name of this file over here. Both of them, again, for simplicity's sake, both of them in the same directory. Okay, so, so far we're looking good. Let's go back and look at our requirements document again. And we see that root element is plant. That means everything that's going to be within this XML document, we'll put a comment in again here, all payload data belongs here. In other words, all of the data in our XML document must be after the open plant tag and before the closed plant tag. That's because the plant tag is our root element. We know the root element is very special. It's the engine and the caboose of our XML document. So all payload data belongs here. I save, no problem there. This is a comment, so it's not counting against us. Uh, we don't need to do any special validation for a comment. But now let's go back and within our root element plant, we want to have a child called genus. So genus is going to represent uh, is going to represent the genus of a plant. Uh, take a look at the required here. Notice that plant, we have a required one. Because that's our root element, we need one and only one plant element. So that says one. Now for a plant, we need to have a genus. And actually I'm thinking I might wanna change this a little bit, but that's okay. We'll keep it like so for the moment. But anyway, a plant, uh, we're going to have, we're going to wanna to have one genus. Uh, and that's what I'm thinking of changing is we wouldn't have more than one. Why don't we make that required one just like so? It'll make me a little bit happier. So within a plant, we need to have one genus. We can have a species, a cultivar, a height, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and make this genus tag. We see it requires a max length of 60. I'm not gonna, going to worry about that just yet, but um, we, can, uh, we can at least stub it out. So I say open genus 
and then close genus, and this one will say Circus. So Circus is the genus for a redbud tree. I choose save, and it does not yet give me a validation warning. Even if I go to XML tools and I say validate now, it says it's valid, but we have to be cautious here. It's only valid because I have not defined the children of this plant tag here, which is our root element here. And so I want to define that. I want to give it a complex type, which means that it can contain child elements. That discussion is going to be a whole other 10, 15 minute discussion of its own. I'd like to do that in a separate video. So let's go ahead and wrap this up now. We've made a quick and dirty XSD. We've made a quick and dirty XML file. In our next video, we are going to start to create some of these elements that we see in our XML definition. And then likely the video after that will do a little bit of the type and the restrictions. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.